At the beginning, it was totally free, definitely. There was nothing fixed. It was not fixed how large this car should be, um, how strongly or not strongly it should be tied to the movie. So this was a process that we went through. I think the big idea for the car was to create a car that didn't scream movie tie-in, that just was a very smart, eco-conscious, well-designed, beautiful car first. And that was just an exciting car. And then once you um, delved into the car and understood more about the design and more about the functionality and more about how it was made, then you would begin to see the, the influence of, of the Avatar franchise and the very eco-conscious, environmentally friendly issues that we try and evoke. What I found most inspiring about working with the Mercedes design team is they were not inhibited. They were pushing boundaries every step of the way. We would come up with a suggestion that was outside of the box and they embraced it. They never said, we can't do it. They might say, we'll look into it. But every time we threw a challenge at them, the Mercedes design team conquered that challenge. It was a co-creation from the very beginning. Both teams had the same spirit to create something inspired by movie, but also inspired by our essential purity design philosophy, which would stun the world and which would uh, just give us a new vision of a human-merged, human-centered, bionic, and very essential object that we wanted to create together. Yeah, we've been talking to them for, for several years, and it's just about the hardest thing to crack is sort of what is it. Once we kind of figured out conceptually that we weren't trying to design a car for the film, but design just truly a concept car, um, it, it all kind of started to fall into place a, a, a lot easier. And then Ben and I were fortunate enough to go to um, Stuttgart and actually go to there design Mecca and work with their, um, you know, their, their top design people, which is just an absolutely fantastic experience. visionary show cars like this one and production cars at the same time and therefore of course all the ideas influence each other and here I think the basic idea is uh, the idea of creating an interaction that is very simplified very intuitive and very natural so what we created is also the pleasure of driving what we want to push to the maximum and through the seats and the center console, 
getting the connection, a strong connection between the human and the car. So we had, first of all, uh, on the seat, you have some exciter giving you feedback. You have a new way of driving device, giving you a direct contact to the wheels and direct contact to the nature. We try to reduce the visual complexity and uh, enhance the experience by using different senses within the car. When you approach the car, it already starts to come to life. It already reacts to you coming nearby through lights and physical movements on the outside. And then when I enter the vehicle and I sit down, I put my hand down on the central elements and the car starts to come to life. I can actually feel my heartbeat being replicated by the vehicle itself and then creating a kind of connection which is unknown. You can actually feel this almost physical, biological connection happening there. In Avatar 1, Jake Sully uses technology uh, to have a link experience, um, which ultimately gives him an experience of, of a tribal and a natural perception of reality that is beautiful and goes way beyond the way he looked at everything before. Um, and he also, you know, has, has a direct bond with, with the creature that he learns to ride, and he really becomes connected to the world. But, but there's a technological aspect to, to allowing him to do that. Um, so in my mind, it's kind of what the car does, right? It's, it's a technologically mediated way to feel connected to something that is different from the normal spirit of a car. One of our goals for the show car was to extend the user's senses. And we wanted to create multiple highlights in the car and one of them was a massive enormous digital surface that is stretching through the interior and we provided the user with this because we wanted to to enhance his vision enhance his senses and that he can dive in a kind of virtual experience space inside the car it was a really magic moment to see when the user interface is popping up on the hand and Inter and the user interacts free, completely freely with it. Well, Avatar, to me, is all about nature. It's about this, this symbiosis, this connection between all the elements. And this was strongly Related to uh, one picture on the movie, you have this loop between the head of the character, the hair, and into the animals. And if you look at the side view on the car, you can see exactly this loop. In the movie, we found a lot of new shapes, forms, and surfaces which inspired us a lot in our work. And for example, you can see that in the three-dimensional uh, concave and convex shape, um, for example, of the, of the driver's seat, uh, which was inspired by a um, leaf. One of the other obvious things that I thought worked really well was the um, influence of the wood sprites, which are the um, seeds of the, you know, seeds of the spirit tree um, in, in the wheels. And you can very much see that shape, but it's, it, it's not contrived though. It feels very natural and it's beautiful. On the whole light scenario, you will find a lot of colors from the avatar world, um, starting on purple to turquoise over blue. So yeah, it was a really nice inspiration, this movie with the fantastic Pandora world inspired by the movie and yet is a legitimate design in its own right, right? It's something that is not just a sculpture, it's not just an art piece, it is a car. It, it sort of has some relationship to your, your brand and your, your, your goals for your own car line, um, but it should immediately evoke probably more the natural beauty side of the Avatar movies. It's a new blossom in our garden. So yes, a new blossom in a garden influences the garden because it's shiny, has a different color maybe than the other blossoms, but it is still a child of the garden. So yes, it will influence us, but we also influenced it and we developed our design philosophy into it. Well, I think this show car is uh, very epic. It's very different to um, pretty much every other show car we have done so far um, because it's very far out there and obviously it's inspired uh, by a science fiction movie. So I think it gives you a, a future vision in all dimensions. It is still a car, but it shows the enormous potential of cars in terms of user experience and in terms of how to get from pure driving functions to an immersive experience space. 
So we were off the car, we came back to the car, and we ended in a very, I would say, uh, inspiring object that is a car, but at the same time, it's alive. So it's a creature and a car, definitely it is, both sides. But a special idea in this car is that it's not only the destination uh, you are interested in, but it's especially the experience you have while you're sitting in a car. So of course, it's, uh, it's almost a bit more than a car we know from today. So it's, uh, it's a full experience room. Most shocking and most fantasy creating will be the flaps on the back of the car, moving even independently from each other if we want to. The car comes alive thing for sure will be the most stunning and surprising part. My personal favorite is the merge on the central device that really shows that basic idea of that human machine merge. Definitely the wheels, because they're highly inspired by the movie, by the wood sprites, basically, which reflect in the whole exterior also. My personal favorite is really that the interface comes closer to the human and uh, that you can uh, interact with the interface very close to your body and that you get different ideas around your surrounding. The idea was really to create a membrane between yourself inside the car and uh, the outside car and get an idea of the beauty of the nature which is surrounding you using the car as a tool. By taking the inspiration from Avatar, I think we were able to, to elevate our essential purity language to the next level. So you see that um, in the surfacing and the proportion in each and every detail uh, of that car that it becomes actually very organic. Um, so in that way, I think we, we uh, elevated our language uh, to a more futuristic approach. Free show cars like that is a great inspiration for us and it helps us to do better production cars. It's not that far future of a car. It's, it's not some impossible fantasy car. Um, it's, it's, it's really, you know, distilling down the best ideas about sustainability and, and, and connectivity to nature and connectivity to each other and putting those forth into an already existing car line with the EQ line. And so it's, it's a very, um, it's very forward thinking, but very attainable and realistic car. I see a, a similarity between Mercedes-Benz design team and what we do here on the Avatar sequels. We are continually looking to push the boundaries of what is possible. We don't want to rest on the laurels of our past. And that's what we found in the Mercedes design team. They were out there ahead of the wave ahead of the curve, looking down the future and in a sustainable way. And therefore, I'm so happy about that car because it really shows um, um, the absolute um, elevation of central purity design. I would say if we are currently at 3.0, like an operating system, this car is probably 6.0. Yeah? So it basically makes three jumps in every extent. And also what it shows is that um, the future is a holistic approach. It's not only we do an exterior, we do an interior, we, and then we put an HMI system into it. No, um, all designers of all different kinds are working together, uh, almost like in the Renaissance, and uh, create something, um, yeah, very complicated. Um, and then they, they um, simplify it again into one beautiful, final object like this.